Hello, and welcome to the Nurse Converse podcast. I'm Melissa Mills, and I'll be your host today. Have you ever wondered how you can use your voice to advocate for your patients, yourself, and the future of the nursing profession? If so, you're in luck. Today's episode is all about legislative advocacy and how you can leverage your voice and knowledge as a nurse to improve nursing and healthcare. A bit about me before we get started. I've been a nurse for 26 years and currently lead the content team at Cinematic Health, where we're using storytelling to prepare the next generation of caregivers. I'm also passionate about advocating for the nursing profession and serve as the executive director of the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement. Joining me today is Ajay Gupta, a healthcare innovator and CEO at HSR.Health, board chair for Holy Cross Health, and one of our founding commissioners at the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement. Ajay, it's a pleasure to have you join me today to discuss how nurses can use their voices to educate legislators and policymakers about the issues that matter most to them. Thank you, Melissa. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to be here with you today. I'm looking forward to the show. Awesome. So let's kick off by just chatting a little bit about the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement. Tell me about the organization and why you wanted to get involved as a commissioner. Thank you. You know, it, the It's a good question. I get that question a lot because, as you know, I am not a nurse by profession. I am in healthcare and do serve on the board of a health system where, of course, I see firsthand how important nursing is to the overall operation of healthcare. So I'm involved with the Commission for Nurse Reimbursement because I think we all recognize that the nursing profession is facing risks right now. We can see these risks in the twin retirement uh, challenge that that we're seeing at nurses. Not only do we have nurses retiring at the end of their careers, as you might think is normal age-related retirements, we know we have to train the next generation to replace retiring professionals. But we're also seeing nurses leaving the profession within one or two years. And in some cases, the percentages of nurses that are leaving after getting trained, after going through you know, a, a bachelor's program for nursing, within a year, it is, yeah. it is very high. And you might not know that that is actually a global phenomenon, right? In Canada, 18 to 30% of nurses leave in first year. In Turkey, 42.5% of nurses leave in the first year. And if you consider the second year, in some cases, it's as much as 50% of new grads leave the profession. So there's something that's potentially wrong. Now, on the positive note, I think we should recognize that this is a reflection that the training and clinical experience a nurse receives is valued in other parts of healthcare and other parts of the overall workforce. That's a good thing. But it does say that there could be something wrong with the profession itself that's making it undesirable, that once people get into it, and again, these are people who are trained. These, These are people who have gone through a little bit of challenge to get into nursing, and then they want to leave very quickly. There's, there's a problem. And I yeah. do not think that working on reimbursement, essentially the compensation will solve all the problems necessarily. But I do think by thinking through how nurses are reimbursed, we can maybe identify potential solutions that can help stabilize the nursing workforce. Yeah, absolutely. I think that you, you shared some really good statistics there about you know the current state of nursing and just how we need to stop um, you know, really looking at band-aids or, or small ways to fix the profession and really start to get to the foundational issues, which we believe at the commission is related to the nursing reimbursement structure. So we really wanna dive into legislative advocacy today. Can you explain what legislative advocacy is to you and why it should matter to nurses and other healthcare professionals? I think of it, Melissa, really as education. What we find is that people honestly don't know the issues in healthcare. They think of health when they're feeling bad. Otherwise, they don't really think of it much at all. They think of healthcare as where you turn to when and if you're feeling sick and need to get better. To some extent, that's okay. Healthcare, of course, relies on having that trust between patients and providers. That trust that patients trust providers or their hospital or the healthcare system will help them get better when they need to. We don't want to lose that trust. 
although truth be told in a lot of places that that trust is being frayed yeah but in the broader context people really don't know what i like to call it, sort of the census level facts on healthcare right uh, they mm-hmm. say things like just go to the doctor just go to the pharmacy get a refill assuming that there is a doctor or pharmacy available to everyone that simply isn't the case is a case in point i was having a conversation with a senator and talking about a particular topic and i just happened to mention as an aside that 55,000 of his constituents living in in his district were more than an hour away from a recognized cancer treatment facility, right, an authorized cancer treatment facility. And he was stunned by this. He did not know that. And and I don't think that it's because this is a politician that doesn't care. This politician, this elected official does care. I'm certain that he could quote statistics on how many retail outlets are in the in his uh, his district and what jobs they bring or how sure. many car dealerships are there and what jobs bring. he knows the plight of the people but he didn't know healthcare because it's just not something we think of so healthcare right. deserts where facilities and resources are not available is simply unknown throughout i'd say the, the general population so in my perspective the first thing we need to do is just meet with these uh, elected officials and just tell them what the issues are. You will be surprised how much they will appreciate just being informed of the of the problems. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of times we think that, well, they've been elected, they should know these things, but it really is our responsibility to identify the things that matter most to us and then educate them and, and reach out. What's your personal experience experience with advocacy work and how long have you been participating in advocacy initiatives? Well, when I think of it in terms of education, throughout my career, I think part of a career of really any profession, any professional is to make people generally aware of the of the challenges and the opportunities that that field presents. So I I'd like to say I've been doing it forever, but maybe not in the way that most people think. I'm not a lobbyist. I don't go down and spend time and advocate for a particular bill or a particular position. But the role I play is to make sure all parties are aware of what the issues and challenges are. Yeah. I think, you know, many nurses may think, but how is that going to impact what I do, right? How is me going and speaking to someone really going to directly impact patient care or the nursing profession as a whole? And how would you answer that? Well, I think we have to make it impact patient care. And, and I'm glad that you asked that question uh, that particular way, right? Because how it impacts an individual person as an individual nurse and how it impacts patient care, which is more systemic and industry-wide, are two separate things, right? Mm-hmm. How an individual person's advocacy can affect them, honestly, it, it's, that's not really the purpose of advocacy. You're not going down to get a raise for yourself, right? right? Right. There are ways to do that. And I fully support every nurse doing what they can think of to get a raise. Um, but that's that's not the outcome. So how it affects you may not be direct. Now, the impact that all educational efforts, all outreach efforts to elected officials at the state and federal level um, and regulators at the states and federal levels, how it can impact the profession, that that can be profound. Again, at times, the, they don't know the issues, so they may not be able to make the most informed decision on a piece of legislation that's in front of them or a regulatory action that they're considering. Uh, making them aware of that may not necessarily change an outcome, but it can help level the playing field. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I know, you know, throughout my career, I think a lot of times probably am similar to other nurses, you feel a little overwhelmed or underprepared when starting advocacy work. In my journey, you know, I've never really done a lot of advocacy work until the last year once I started getting um, involved with the commission. So what specific actions can someone take to influence healthcare policy at their local, state, and national level that really helps them to maybe not feel so overwhelmed about, you know, yeah. getting started? You know, it's, it's 
I don't really mean this to be funny, but it's almost funny. When you say a nurse is overwhelmed by legislative outreach or advocacy, it is not nearly as hard as caring for patients on the ward. Yeah. So don't worry about that at all. I, I would say to any nurse that is thinking of reaching out to your elected official to make your opinion known on everything, it is not going to leave you as overwhelmed as your typical 8, 12, or longer hour shift. Yeah. Let's, let's just let's be clear about the level <laughs> of difficulty in the day job that you do have relative to legislative outreach. Now, yeah. but, but the, the truth is there is, there is a lot of a challenge in that. And building off of your previous question about uh, what's the, the potential gain, this is a long-term issue, right? It, it, yeah. Any legislative outreach doesn't change the world that day. Right. The legislative cycle, the regulatory cycle is a very long term thing. And so one of the things I think we want to get get everyone used to is that in this task, you take small steps. Talk to one person, even if it's a legislative staffer or an intern. Talk to any one person. Make your issues real for that one person and grow from there. Right. Then. Maybe two people, maybe then an entire uh, office. It, maybe th then you reach out to a committee and talk to members of the committee. Uh, but talk to one person, take small steps, and go from there. That also, of course, will help you not feel overwhelmed uh, in any case. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, know, you also have to really think about that issue and try to find the right people, right? Like some things you can do at the local or state level and other things are more at that, that national level. What would be a tip for conquering your fears um, and talking to elected officials and staffers? One thing I'd say is you're talking about something you know, right? You, the conversations that you have with whomever it is, the intern to the congressman, senator, mayor, governor, president, whomever you're talking to, you're talking about something you know, something you, you live through, something in your daily job. So yeah. you, don't, you almost don't have to prepare. I mean, of course you do have to prepare. Of course you will want your bullet point list, but you're talking from your heart about something you know. You're not likely to trip over your words. You're not likely to say something wrong. You're not likely to be misinformed. It's you talk about what you know. I think that, it, and if we keep that in mind, I think we can put people at ease about their ability to do this task. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you talk about what you know, you are passionate about that, right? And so bringing that that passion, that um, firsthand lived experience, really can be more powerful than any preparation that you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I certainly don't want to suggest that you wouldn't prepare, right? You'd prepare sure. for anything, just like you prepare uh, f to, to care for a patient. You, you prepare first, right? Whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, but there is some truth in, the, in what you're saying about if you talk about what you know, what your passion is, the preparation level is something totally different, right? If yeah. you were giving a lecture on a general topic to an audience we don't know, that's different. Here, that's not the case. We're talking about something we do know. And the other side of that is do try to do a little bit of homework and know who you're talking to or what the interests are of the, the people you're talking to. Sometimes you can't do that because you don't know in advance who you'll get in front of you. But, but if, if, we, if you are targeting a particular legislator or regulatory office, understanding a little bit about what they do, what their positions are, can be helpful. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about how to get started. How can someone find or get started in advocacy work and find organizations that sponsor or plan events like Hill Days or other advocacy events? So I can certainly talk about what we're doing at the commission. There's a, there's a lot of ways to get started, right, yeah. Melissa, as you know. There's a lot of organizations that do Hill Days. Mm -hmm. And I would say to any nurse or anyone out there, just look at whatever organizations you are already a part of and see if they do Hill Days or if their partner organizations do Hill Days, which is generally a day when as many members or volunteers show up on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. or at their state uh, capitals or the seat of their county government and just talk to as many legislators as possible. 
the commission is doing something very similar, but in, with, with one interesting caveat, we're not doing a day. We're, we're going to be on Capitol Hill this fall many days. Right. So that gives the nurses an opportunity and, and supporters, non-nurses who are interested in the profession can, uh, can join us as well. Many opportunities to join us and go down to Capitol Hill to talk to as many legislators and their staffs as possible about the issues that, that we're facing. And we're doing a number of things to get ready for that, right? Uh, we, one of our wonderful co-chairs and, and co-founders, uh, Sharon Pierce, is a, a nurse, is still a practicing nurse, nurse anesthesiologist, and is going to offer two training sessions to members just to get them ready to, to do this. And as I said, the getting ready is not as hard as you might think because we're talking about things you know and we're talking about your daily professions, but, but we're still offering two opportunities just to, to meet with somebody who's done the job, who's done the work, and just to help get ready for, for being on site in Capitol Hill. We're very excited about it, right? We're going to be down there at least four days. We've yeah. signed up a very large number, probably a larger number than we anticipated. We had eight uh, senators and congressmen on day one, uh, yeah. which was more than we anticipated. And right. we'll meet with them and just share our thoughts, hear their views, and it'll be a, a very eye-opening, I think, enlightening day. So finding resources, and, and you talked a little bit about the, the training, finding resources and finding organizations, I think, that you are aligned with and that they are um, advocating or educating on issues that are important to you is, is very important. One way that nurses can do that, um, nurse.org is great about publishing articles and news um, that talks about Hill Days and different organizations that are doing that type of work. So you can definitely lean into nurse.org and use that as a resource. How can, what are other ways that nurses can identify the issues that are most important to them and then find that organization that aligns with what's important to them? So that might take a little bit of Google searching, a little bit of reading the local newspapers, right? Yeah. I don't know that that's truly very hard in the world now. If, if you were to do a Google search or even maybe leverage ChatGPT uh, to find out the lists of organizations that are working on a particular issue, mm -hmm. you'll probably get more than you would have anticipated. And then you can simply go to their websites. They'll probably have some sort of volunteer uh, email message or inbox. You can go to the social media sites and just to start uh, communicating. Um, the Commission for Nurse Reimbursements is very similar in that setup. We, yeah. People can come to our website. We have a LinkedIn page. We do have a circle um, platform. And, and I'm sure as our executive director, Melissa, you know a little bit more about it than, than I do probably. But we, we'd like to think that we are very accessible for any, uh, anyone who wants to help us educate uh, legislators on issues facing the nursing workforce today. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're right. You know, it's it's really about going out and looking and searching for those organizations. As you said, with the commission, our website, um, our LinkedIn page, people can get involved. And I think most organizations are like that. And you can find out about the events that they're doing to really get plugged in so that you can start to have your voice heard and your concerns addressed by policymakers how would a nurse determine the right audience when providing education on an issue? How do you know who to talk to? I think that can be, again, one of those kind of um, intimidating topics of trying to figure out who do I talk to or where do I go to really get to the right legislator or policymaker. Yeah, that is a challenge. You're, you are right about that. It, I don't know that there's necessarily the perfect answer. Now, sometimes you, the, the way to go is to see which legislators are considering legislation related to your topic. And then, of course, you want to talk, talk to them. However, I'd say in a broader setting, especially for those who are starting in this, don't so much worry about the right perfect audience. Right? Talk to anyone. They're, they're, if, as long as you're talking to legislators or regulators, you're talking to somebody that has some influence over the state of healthcare in America. So you're talking to the right people in a way. And especially at the beginning, 
first you can sort of work through how you want to communicate and what exactly is your own position on these issues. When you're, when you're talking, uh, you're also listening. You're also giving the legislator or their staff member the opportunity to share with you why their position is what it is. You might find that they might have some view that you kind of align with, right? right. It, it might help you change and adapt your own uh, position, which is not uncommon, which is not uncommon. None of us see the entire whole big picture necessarily. So changing our own position can certainly happen. So yes, it's a, an interesting thing to, to, to try to find out who the exact best person is to talk to, to educate, but just start and you'll sort of find that you can, uh, that problem so, sort of goes away as you build a habit of communicating with our elected officials. Absolutely, and I can speak a little bit to just with the legislative days that you um, talked about a little bit, reaching out to the staffers and schedulers and different people who are working with the, the legislators. It's amazing at how welcome they are to really start to you know have conversations with them to get meetings scheduled. I think I was maybe expecting a little bit more friction points than what we we found like you said we have you know eight meetings scheduled for the first day but i think a lot of it is just um getting over your fears and getting over that you know worry or concern that maybe they're not going to find your issue important and just reaching out and, and getting started yeah I, I mean nursing issue is important right you know yeah. there are, nursing is a profession that takes place in every legislative district in America at all levels of government, right? So to some extent, this is not an issue that they can ignore, and so they will meet with us. I, I can't say that there is any major or any issue at all that legislators should or can ignore. I'm not gonna say that, but this is certainly one that is important and that is present yeah. everywhere. Uh, and as we're talking about nursing, then we are going to have a response where they do want to hear our, our position. They, they don't necessarily, meeting with us doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily agree. There may right. be friction when we say we think here's a way to go forward. They may say, they may push back and they're, you know, within their rights to do so. And we certainly want to hear why they want to push back on anything we might we might discuss with them. But they're, they're certainly going to be willing to have these conversations with us. Yeah, absolutely. So some people say, you know, nursing and healthcare is not political. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Agree. At least you I'd agree? like to agree. I'd like to agree. I think we'd all like to think that ideally that healthcare is apolitical right? because healthcare is all about helping people be and live their healthiest life. Unfortunately, we don't really live in an ideal world, right? Politics yeah. is a part of almost everything we do. So it's going to, and to some extent, we should be grateful that we do live in a country where we can respectfully engage in a political process, right? As we said, we can call up and make meetings with and go visit uh, members of, of Congress. We can have Hill Days. Um, so... Ideally, there shouldn't be politics in healthcare. Unfortunately, there probably are. So I think we do need to engage. And, and, I, and, I, and I say that as long as we focus, or at least in my experience, as long as the focus is on ensuring that all parties are educated as to what the issues and their underlying causative factors are, then you know, it, we can be helpful in moving, moving the, the needle in, on healthcare issues in, in Capitol Hill. Absolutely. Well, it has been a pleasure, um, Ajay, talking to you today. Um, if any of the listeners are interested in learning more about the commission, and you talked a little bit about this, but tell them how they can get involved. You can go to our website, Commission for Nurse Reimbursements. You can also go to our LinkedIn page. And we, all of the commissioners, are, they're listed on our website. They all are open to being contacted, myself included. Uh, Melissa, our executive director, is certainly open to being contacted by anybody who yeah. wants to, to get involved and support our, our efforts. Absolutely. And you and I are both on LinkedIn as well. So um, anybody can connect with us there, message us, um, follow our journeys, learn about what we're doing with the commission there as well. To wrap up, I've jotted down a couple of takeaways for our listeners who want to get involved. And first, 
is just to make it impact patient care. So really think about the things that are important to you and important to your patients and start there when trying to select a topic that you want to advocate about. Next is talk about what you know, and that really goes together, right? You n understand patient care. Nurses know what the issues are that are in healthcare and in nursing today. So talk about what you know and finally get involved. Just reach out to organizations, find organizations like the commission, like ANA, lots of different organizations out there that you can get involved in and start there. And I think you'll find a lot of support for this type of work. Yes, we would certainly love your support. Absolutely. If you found this episode helpful, please rate and review the podcast. It will help me grow as a nurse podcaster and help nurse.org reach more listeners and share it with a friend who can use this information. Thanks for listening. And thanks again, Ajay, for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Melissa.